Hello and welcome to another Budget Model Railways video. And what I thought with today, I would do today is just talk a little bit about operating potential on my layout. Um, I've said um, a few times that I would uh, do a video on that because after all that's what this layout is about. It was made to shunt, it was made to operate. Uh, it's not a watching trains go around video which I, I, I like those layouts but this is about shunting. So I wanted to show a little bit of the potential it's got. Now a lot of the potential is due in fact to the design of the track plan. So things like I've got the head shunt on the passing loop here that's big enough to take the biggest loco I want to run and one wagon which greatly helps shunting. I also have here a uh, kickback siding but that has a head shunt and the head shunt again is big enough to get two wagons, a loco and another wagon which means that I can shunt the kickback siding without having to move these wagons. Of course what it also means though is if I want some fun I can always move these out of the way into the spare siding and because the spare siding is facing the same way I don't need to interfere too much with this part um, and it gives me some more shunting fun to do and we'll show that in a moment. So a lot of it is down to the design of the track plan. It's relatively simple. We have a passing loop here with a siding at each end of the passing loop. I've then put a point or a switch for our American friends into the middle which goes to this kickback siding and head shunt. And then to make it a little bit more interesting on the passenger front I've got a bay platform over the back. Now that's ideal for instance for putting a nice little two car DMU in. I have quite a nice trying one that will sit in there quite nicely but it's also useful uh, for storing passenger coaches in. So I will just show a few movements. Now what I'm not going to do is I'm not going to show every single movement because if I did that, that would this video would be about an hour long uh, and research tells us all that the average time of watching a YouTube video is three to five minutes. So if I go and do an hour long video the vast majority of you are not going to watch to the end. So what I'm doing here is briefly explaining why there's a lot of potential and what some of that potential is and then I'll put some trains running at the end for those of you that, that are happy to sit and watch for a bit longer. One of the things that helps with knowing the operating potential for a layout is knowing a little bit about the way the railways worked. So for instance, you could have a dedicated coal train that would bring in your coal wagons, drop two off there. Now you wouldn't bring just those two, it would probably bring four or five for the other stations. So you've got a bit of shunting to do to drop them off. Um, the passing loop here will take six short wagons so that works quite well. You could have a pickup goods that does the same thing. Comes in, picks up the two wagons and takes them away. You could have a drop off goods that does the same thing. Drops a few wagons out of a consist of six into here and you can see then what shunting you might have to do. If you don't put the wagons in the right order you might need to take these two wagons out and put them in there so you can get the right two back and the same in the goods shed. In fact I'm going to use the idea of a station pilot here when I do operate the layout to do a lot of this shunting to get trains ready, consists ready, for the bigger locos to take away. So that's a little bit about the goods yard. Let's take our goods train uh, away for a moment and then we will run a few passenger trains in and give you some idea of the passenger possibilities. So that's my nice Hornby large prairie. And we're going to run in now um, my Hornby 060 Tender Loco with a couple of coaches. Now it's worth pointing out that this layout is only 4 feet by 16 inches. There we go. Now that's a, a recent acquisition. Acquisition. It's a teeny bit noisy but it's a very smooth reliable runner. And we can do, oh I shouldn't have done that, we can do the obvious here which is just to do the standard. Now I'm running it a little bit fast because I'm talking at the same time. So those of you that get upset about those sort of things, um, partly it's because I'm concentrating on what I'm saying. I, I would have had the coaches in the right place, for instance. Um, now what I'm doing here with the controller, I don't know if I can show you, uh, what I try and do is get a set speed that I like and then I use the direction button to stop and start the loco rather than having to keep using the throttle if you like. There we go. So I stop it using the button and then I press the button having changed the points in the other direction. And there we go. That's then ready 
to move off. Now one of the other things I can do of course is I can pull the coaches out of here beyond the point and I can shunt them into the bay and if there's one coach um, then obviously I can leave the loco with it or I could leave them there um, and we can have another loco pull them away to give us some interest. So there we go. That's the majority of the, the passenger, but of course we could do mixed passenger goods, which would mean that we would have to shunt the wagons around for a while. That was one of the reasons that the railways were so unprofitable, because passengers were obviously often kept waiting while they shunted goods trains around to make part of it. So what we're going to do here, we're going to run in a little pickup goods. So let's just make sure all my points are right. Does does mean you have to keep a bit switched on when you do this. So we're going to run the large prairie back in. There we go. And what we're going to do here, we're going to just uncouple and leave the uh, brake van and the wagon there. And we're just going to, we're going to um, take the coal wagons out of the way, just for fun, to show you the, the stages of that. Now what I did find, this has got a lot of points and a lot of locos do tend to hesitate on points. Uh, this is actually my second attempt to do this video because one of my really reliable locos decided to hesitate on every point. Um, I have found that it's worth spending a bit of time seeing which locos will actually run reliably over everything. And I've also had a problem with wagons. Some of the newer, smaller tension lock couplings tend to get coupling lock when they run with the older couplings. So you will need to spend a bit of time making everything compatible. So what we've done there, I've put my two coal wagons out of the way so that I can run back in and pick my wagons up out of here. There we go. Oh, now this point is, is a little bit of trouble, so I'm going to have to give it a clean because everything doesn't normally hesitate on that. And then we're going to try that through there. Some wagons don't like being shunted backwards, so that's again a, a thing worth watching out for. And then we're going to pull these two forward. And then just to make it interesting, we're going to pick up this wagon from the goods shed as well. There we go. Some of you will spot, I forgot to change the point. <laughs> and now that's derailed. This is the fun of model railways, isn't it? Um, as one of our regular commentators said though, don't, don't take the gaffs out because that's what will happen. So that wagon you see is going to be a bit problematic because it's a bit light. So what's happening here? Oh, we've derailed at the front. Do you know, I did this the other evening with no trouble at all. There we go. And then you'll see my deliberate error here that we've got too many wagons. So we'll just take that one. Now there's more than one way of doing every shunting move, obviously. Um, so I'm sure people will tell me that um, I could have done it better or smoother or quicker, and I'm sure you could. Um, but that to me is the fun of, of what we're trying to do here. Um, oops. Everybody will have their own way of doing it. And then we can run him forward. And then obviously just one at a time, shunt the wagons onto the consist. Sometimes you do just need to help these couplings. Oh, yeah, that one doesn't want to work. Because these are all different couplings made at different times. And you do sometimes find that they're not always compatible.
and I'm sure somebody's going to tell me that's why you should go out and spend hundreds of pounds buying lots of new wagons that are all perfect. Yes, well, if that's what you want to do, you can, but I like to spend a little bit of money on my wagons and I'd rather do that and play around till I get it right. There we go. So that's that done now. And then obviously what we've got to do is get our brake van back at the other end. So that'll be relatively straightforward. Lovely loco, that one. It's the Hornby Large Prairie. Remember to change the point at the other end. So we can then take our brake van off. Now you'll see that I tend to use these shorter brake vans as it just gives me a little bit more room in the sidings. And then this will show why we need to be able to get the loco and one wagon in our head shunt. There we go, because it just gives us a bit more room. And then we can go back round Change our points. A little bit harsh there. Yeah. And that's it. That's our pickup goods picked up. We can pull that in there. Now, some of you will have noticed, of course, that we've got to be a good engine driver because what we haven't done is we haven't put our coal wagons back yet. So we'll just run down through here. Get our coal wagons. I say these a little bit faster than I probably would do normally, but I don't want to take too long doing this. We're up to about 12, 13 minutes already, so we've lost quite a few people. Put those back where they came from. Run back up here. I might put point motors on at some point. I haven't decided yet. Um, I'm quite happy doing Hand of God, so it doesn't bother me. And there we go. That's our pickup goods done. And away it goes. Quite a good looking little rake there. So that gives you quite an idea of all the different things you could do. And as I say, if you think of all the combinations of cattle wagons and open wagons and different wagons in the wrong place and coal wagons, it's a huge amount of shunting potential. Passenger trains, you've got your bay that you can run things into, or you could hold a DMU in there. And um, you can get three coaches in. So you can run three coaches, isolate using that point, and then bring a station pilot um, to pull them away let the loco out and put it back in again. So there's lots of potential here um, in what is, I say, only four foot by 16 inches. I hope that gives you a flavour. Uh, as I say, it would get quite a boring video, I think, if I spent an hour doing all the combinations. But I hope that just gives you an idea. And if you've got any specific questions, please don't forget to ask. Thank you, as always, for watching. This seems to have been a really uh, popular layout. It's not finished. Uh, and I'm, now I'm going to get people saying, what about this? What about that? I've got a lot of people to add. Oh, and of course, the more observant of you, will notice that I've got a platform canopy, which wasn't on the earlier videos. So that's just a little platform canopy um, that's been made out of um, mounting board. Uh, the valance was done using pinking shears and a ball pen. Um, and that's given me rather a nice little platform canopy for my station now, um, which looks rather good there, just makes more of the station. So as always, thank you for watching. If you're new to us, please subscribe. Please click the notifications. Uh, it'd be really nice if we could get 20,000 subscribers by the end of the year. We're up to 19,200. Um, so if you like what we do, spread the word. And I hope you've enjoyed this little video and speak to you again soon. Hi, thanks for watching the video and for the nice comments. Uh, click on the left for a previous video in this series. Click on the right for another video you might enjoy. And please don't forget to click to subscribe, like, comment, etc. Thanks again.